more from the men's marathon in those world championships. We're back live with David Coleman. We're around the seven mile mark now. A slight break. Akone is the leader from Tanzania. Got a fair record. He won Fukuoka last year. Two hours, nine minutes, 45 seconds. Third in the World Half Marathon in uh, 92. That's the group just behind. Espinosa on the near side. And Suri with that group from Tunisia. But this is the leader, Akone. And behind him, clear in second place at the moment, is the Japanese Nakamura. Won this year, the Opsu Marathon, which is his first marathon. But looking there at Ju Marikanga, who has done a lot of marathons under the two hour ten mark, but those were a long time ago. Ran his greatest race in 1982, so you can tell how long he's been on the scene. He ran that great race in Brisbane in the Commonwealth Games against Rob Di Castello, who incidentally became the first ever world marathon champion. But I'm interested to see the two leaders who've broken away. Boe Kone there, the Tanzanian athlete who won in Fukuoka last year. And since it was him that broke away, I suddenly noticed that the Mexican Espinosa, who's the sixth fastest marathon runner of all time, suddenly shot to the front of the chasing group because he realized that this man is a good athlete. He's a very good athlete. Having won a major marathon like Fukuoka means that he makes a break, and it's only a gradual break. He's not going crazy yet. If he, he does something like this, then the rest of them better get on their metal and better start thinking about it, because in the marathon, it depends who forms the breakaway group. And if it contains good athletes, then you've got to think again your plan. Actually, one or two narrow spots on the course where when you're running in a bunch, there's no way people trapped in the bunch can follow you. And I think that's what Kone has tried to do. The Japanese that realized the danger, Nakamura, weighing 786, he tried to go with him. He's not gone all the way with him, though, by any means. There's a gap of about 20 meters. Incidentally, in the pack behind, we've got all three Britons, Naroka, Hudspeth, and Peter Whitehead. They went through 10,000 meters in 32 minutes, which is about 2.14 pace. And I think the pace explains why the three Britons are in the group. Nothing. happening until suddenly Boe Kune just took, it, took them out with a three minute kilometer which is a very comparatively fast kilometer compared with what they've been doing earlier and uh, nobody responded to it until suddenly Nakamura responded to it chased it out there and then there's two of them clear and a big group And now they're coming into the center of town where we can see the statue of Poseidon, which looks over the square of the avenue. There'll be crowds out here later in the day. A tremendous crowds out here in the evening, but there'll be crowds out here now to watch the marathon come through. They brought the marathon just on a little detour here, just to, so they can bring it in the main part of town. I'm sure the uh, tourist board of Gothenburg will be grateful for that. But there's the narrow part of the course that you, you spoke about, David. It really is tight there. But you can only get the three or four athletes across. As we can see, the 13 kilometer mark. That might be quite interesting just to see if they Boe Kune kept it going at that pace. Well, that's just an um, The last three kilometers run in about nine minutes, which is why. breaking away from the group.
You see Richard Naruka weaving his way through on the tram line. There just to get take a bit closer order. As he realizes that the chase is on now. So the race in the marathon after 13 kilometers, that's one almost one full circuit of this course. Now beginning to start to get gather some momentum. Naraka gave him well in touch. Akone is 25, the leader, Tanzania. Has run 2835. Sixth in uh, Boston when he clocked that uh, time. in the fourth and fast course. That was last year. But he's not to be taken easily. They can't take too many liberties. Nakamura, the Japanese, has dropped back into the pack. 450, Turbo, Ethiopia. On the left, with all the fives, Naroka. They come past the, the feed station there, and I noticed Richard Naruga looked very serious. He then grabbed his bottle. They've got their bottles numbered, so they're, they're allowed to put out their own drinks, their own concoction. Some of them use plain water. Some of them use Defiz Coca-Cola. Some of them use the, the modern electrolyte replacement drink. But they all do it their own way. And quite honestly, it's important that they get their own drink. They get used to running. With whatever concoction they use, and it's important that those feeding stations where the specific bottles are numbered, that they actually get the ones that are down to them. Want to get it? The Commonwealth champion from Australia was in that group. All five saw. Krzyzharkov. The Russian wearing double one oh five and Lee Korea. Yeah. A danger man, eight three two. A lot of these athletes set out their schedules before this start. They're running around two hours, 14 pace. I think they'll speak on that. But taking no limit, isn't there? The chasing group includes Monigetti, who talks about uh, his own schedule for the race. For me personally, I don't wear a watch when I race, so championship, and I'm very conscious of the yeah, the, the placing rather than the time. Yeah. Yeah, I always use the area, if you're going well, you've got the lead car there to look at. So it's an incentive to keep up near the front, but very much it's a race situation. The times are boning in, it's not me much alone. But basically, you know, I'm always a few run rather than a track. And the city centre almost. Makone has got quite a good lead, actually, when you see it on that shot. But I guess it's probably about 50 metres. It looks like Turbo of Ethiopia in second place. Big group there. The Rokas certainly in it. And the last news we had is both the other Britons were in that group, Peter Whitehead and Mark Hudspeth. 
That was quite an interesting comment from Steve Monaghetti when he said that he doesn't run with a watch on, but he assumes in the big time marathons that he's going to be close enough to the leader to see the lead car so he knows what's going on. Well, in this particular case, he's about um, 12 seconds behind the leader. He's in a group. He can't see the lead car. So I would have said this advantage of not wearing a watch in a, in a race like this would be uh, down to Steve Monaghetti here because he really doesn't know why the the Tanzanian is broken out and uh, and that's you know you need all the army you can get in the marathon and I just think he would have been better off knowing it well he's gone rather a long way up the road doesn't he Marathon's all about pace, judgment, and conditions on the day. See from the shadow that uh, the sun's still blazing down. It was 80 when they started and rising. Breeze from the northwest, but in this area of the city, there won't be a lot at all. Barkhad Smith there leading that group. That's the second group now. He's dropped off the other Hud Smith wearing five four four and certainly conditions like today so what out our feet They made the African. They certainly are, and some of the some of the Europeans, some of the Australians, for example, they train for these events and they meticulously prepare. And sometimes in a marathon, when it's warm conditions like this, you really have no idea going into it how it's going to affect your body. The Asian. Can, can be beneficiaries of this kind of weather, but the point of the marathon is. It's an endurance test, and then if you superimpose very, very hot weather on it, then you can get all kinds of strange results. And sometimes the altitude athletes, the athletes who live up in the mountains, up in Kenya and Tanzania, and in Morocco, and also in Mexico, they run very well at sea level in the springtime and in autumn time, but August is not a marathon time of the year. N never any one of the top 40 times of all time in the marathon have been set in August and I wouldn't be uh, that wouldn't change today as far as I would be concerned but the point is when they train well at altitude in the dry heat that they have at altitude sometimes the warm weather at sea level doesn't really suit the altitude athlete either so really a little bit of a lottery when you get a very good feel like this today Dino Free Espinosa of Mexico 832 is Lee of Korea that shot suggests they are closing them down that top shot gives us more information really Be a bit of foreshortening there Espinosa, 903, sixth fastest marathon runner in history. Second in Boston last year. Fukuoka. Last year. And third in a Korean marathon this year. I'm talking about 903. The red shorts. 832 is lead. The Korean is good. And Turbo is Ethiopia. Well, I'm sure the reason Espinosa is leading that chasing group is because he's met 
Boe Kone before. He ran against him in Fukuoka when Kone won it, and he was fourth. Since then, Espinosa has become the sixth fastest marathon runner of all time when he ran in Boston. And the point of the matter is that he, he was. The point of that matter is that the, he was uh, impressed with his run in Fukuoka. So as soon as he realised it was him breaking out there, he decided to kind of bring the group along and do something about it. Two Britons in this group. Actually, that very fast marathon in Boston last year, if I remember, had a slight following wind, which helped them enormously. Well, the leader's committed. Turbo, the Ethiopian, in second place. He's about uh, 25. He won in Prague earlier this season. He ran in Rome when he finished 11th in 2 hours 15, 13 earlier this season too. But he ran for half in 64, but he cracked up towards the end. Steve Monigetti, the Australian, the Commonwealth champion, knows what he's doing. A master nowadays at pace judgment. Got a tremendous record in marathon. Second in 89 in London, his first major success. He was second again this year. And of course, like Cole's marathon last year in Victoria, was a masterpiece. He'd worked it all out. He ran exactly to plan. And he talks about not worrying about watch. He didn't need one there because the lead car was always in view. Oh, well. That's Silver of Portugal, one of the early... Uh Oh, number 103. One. I think it's Panero, Bren. One of the fancied athletes, actually. He's run two hours 10.35 this year. But clearly in trouble. And this early in the race, you'd think he must have started with uh, a problem. He's got a very good marathon record, but you wouldn't expect him to be in that situation so early. He's in the London Marathon this year. I can't flex this on the Hickle. Gone in there already. Uh, it's Steady pace, like you wouldn't pull a hamstring in a marathon. Naroka there, moving very easily, leading that chasing group, which includes Lee, the Korean, Espinosa, is the Turbo of Ethiopia. And now they're beginning to race, there's no question about that. One or two of these characters are now taking the leader seriously. 15k uh, in just over 47 minutes, 47.13. Which makes the pace, Brendan, about... Well, it's, it's improving very quickly now. The, the first kilometre, they run in 16.08. The second one, they run in 15.52. And the third, sorry, the five kilometre split. And the third five kilometre split, they run in 15.14. So the race is getting faster, and Akone has got a reasonable lead. They know he's good, so they know that they've got to chase him. And the thing about Akone, it's typical of a lot of the Africans, they don't exhibit patience in these marathons very, very quickly away there. Actually, they're closing on him now. He's a 12-second lead. And by the way, that caption was totally incomplete. There are more athletes there than uh, we've shown on the caption, including Britain's Richard Naroka.